Welcome to the MOOC in Tractomics course. Today we will be discussing about surface plasma resonance. The biological system depend upon molecular interactions of biomolecules to form stable complexes. The identification of protein interactions involving proteins with known functions with protein partners to understand the uncharacterized roles can lead to better understanding of these uncharacterized proteins. The ability to rapidly and simultaneously screen a large number of proteins for studying their biochemical activity including protein protein, protein lipid, protein nucleic acid and protein small molecule interactions require very high throughput instrumentation. The most popular methods currently being used to detect protein protein interactions include conventional yeast to hybrid methods, immunoprecipitations and protein microarrays. As we know that there are certain limitations associated with labels or tags which may interfere with protein function including their binding to the interactors. Additionally, it is always not very straightforward procedure to label the query molecules. Therefore, there is a need for label free biosensors which can avoid such issues and also allow real time measurement of binding. In today's lecture, we will have a discussion on surface plasma resonance with an invited guest, Mr. Lalit Kishore from G Healthcare Life Sciences. We are going to discuss about Bayakor SPR technology. Let us now discuss about SPR as one of the emerging label free technique for studying biomolecular interactions. Today we will discuss about the surface plasma resonance technology and its various applications in proteomics. So, can you just brief us about your uh, experience of using the Bayakor technology from last several years? Uh, I st mm, my educational background is that I am not a biologist, okay. uh, though Bayakor is uh, largely a biological tool. Uh, my background is in chemical engineering, so I am a chemical engineer with an MS in management. Uh, however, I find uh, very varied uses for SPR technology these days. Uh, I find its use in uh, biopharmaceuticals, I find its use in basic research in nanotechnology, in pharmaceutical industry, in QC labs. Uh, so basically I think it's my um, chemistry and chemical engineering background that helps me work with, uh, work with BIACOR and quite a lot of applications that I see across the country on BIACOR technology. All right, so you are uh, utilizing your varied background to apply on the different biological problems. Yes, yes, that is what I think. Uh, SPR technology also does that, actually uses a very simple technology and applies it to different things in biology and uh, actually gives out results that are uh, there for everyone to see. So, Lalit, can you please tell us uh, how you got interested in working on the surface plasma resonance technology? Yes. GE Healthcare has been associated with Biacore as a company for a very long time. Um, in the year 2006, we actually acquired Biacore. And up until that point, Biacore was uh, there only in some places in India. Um, so I got into Biacore in 2006, surely out of interest in uh, chemical interactions and interaction analysis. And ever since, I've been just uh, working on Biacore and uh, label-free interaction analysis technologies. So can you mention uh, currently what are the major applications of SPR? in the area of proteomics? Uh, actually, very vast, very wide ranging applications of SPR, uh, starting from a simple binding analysis or kinetics analysis, um, analysis of affinity of interactions, whether it is protein-protein interactions, protein-DNA interactions, protein-RNA interactions, uh, protein-small molecule interactions in drug discovery, quality control, varied applications of SPR actually. Uh, we support a very large variety of customers from different backgrounds who want to do SPR in their labs. Okay. So definitely you can uh, see probably that SPR application will be very broad yes. in uh, almost all the proteomics laboratory. Absolutely. Depending upon their 
uh, experiments and the questions yes. they want to ask. Yes. So Bayakur is one of the pioneer in the field of uh, studying the label-free interactions and studying about biomolecular interactions. Can you tell some of the latest uh, advancement? What are the major uh, applications by using the Bayakur technology? Let me start with a video okay. that shows basically what SPR is. Sure. And then probably followed by another video of how biological analysis happens on Bayakur. And then just a few videos, short ones on how Bia Core works. Okay. And then I'll quickly come to the applications of Bia Core. Okay, so okay. we can. Uh, All right, see let some me videos. show you the first video. So, what I show here is the basic SPR phenomenon, right? Um, this is the, the SPR chip which you see here. Uh, on the top of the SPR chip is a gold layer. And on the top of it is a flow cell. At the bottom, you see a hemispherical prism. So SPR phenomenon is pretty simple that when you actually have the prism and you shine a laser light through the prism, as you will see shortly, when you shine the laser light through the prism, the light reflects at a total angle, uh, to angle of total internal reflection. Um, the light reflects at the angle of total internal reflection and evanescent energy waves are created on the top of the chip. And these evanescent energy waves are also called surface plasmons. And these surface plasmons are the ones which are used to actually study biological interactions. When I go to video two now, you will see how biological interactions are studied. Let us assume that you have an interaction, A plus B gives AB. What you do in SPR is you take one of the interactants, say B, and put it on the chip and pass A over it. Let me show you how it happens. You take one of the interactants, which is B in this case, and you actually immobilize it on the chip. You can see the molecules getting immobilized right now. And then when the molecules get immobilized, there's an increase in mass, which changes the refractive index, and that is measured in real time. Now you pass the second interactant A over it. If binding happens and AB gets formed, you see a further increase in mass, which is again measured in real time. You stop the flow of A and start flowing a buffer. It comes off in a dissociation, and that dissociation is also seen in real time. So essentially, what you're doing with Bia core is actually just measuring the amount of mass on surface of the chip. The mass on the surface increases or decreases, and that increase or decrease is measured in real time. This phenomenon is what we apply now to study biological interactions. Actually, BIA core is BIA for biological interaction analysis. So let me show you a few videos, examples of how BIA core can be used to study some in some experiments. This is an example where A plus B gives AB. If you see the curve, and if the curve is existing, it means AB is formed. If you pass A over B and there is no response, which means if you see a flat line, then AB is not formed. So it's a very simple example where you can actually decide whether the interaction is happening or not happening. I will show you another example now of kinetics analysis where you will see two examples. The first example will be that of an extremely rapid association. So you see the slope of the curve goes up very fast and comes down extremely fast. So this is a rapid association and dissociation. Whereas if you see the slow, slope of this curve that is about to come up, it is very slow association and very slow dissociation. So just by looking at these curves, you are able to actually tell if the interaction is fast or if it is slow. So this, these are some of the examples of BIOCO technology at work. Right, so I think unlike uh, microarrays where people can detect the interaction, but they cannot tell the nature of the interaction, here the edge is that by looking at these type of kinetics and the curves, one you can also tell about the type of association, dissociation, and the absolutely. overall kinetic analysis. Yes. So, um, and here I have on, on my uh, PPT, a very simple analysis of different things that can be done with Bia Core. So when someone asks me what can be done with Bia Core, these are the six things that can be done with Bia Core. So very shortly put, these are the six applications of Bia Core. For whenever A plus B forms AB, when you're studying an interaction A plus B gives AB, the questions you ask is, 
A, the first question you ask is, does the interaction happen or not? Which means, is the molecule AB formed or not? The second question you ask is, how fast is the interaction or how slow is the dissociation? The third question that you ask is, how strong is the interaction? So what is the affinity of the interaction? The fourth question you ask is, how much of the analyte is there? Which means, what is the, what is the concentration of this analyte? Sometimes in drug industry you ask, is this interaction a safe interaction or not? Yep. And sometimes if you have a heterogeneous analyte and you see that the binding is happening, you want to ask, what is it that is binding? Because there are too many components in this analyte, so what is it that is specifically binding? Right. And these are the five different things that you can do with beer code. So I think as you rightly mentioned, uh, identifying the very specific interactor is the most challenging aspect of it. Yes. Because that's where many times uh, people fail and they discover the false interactors. Yes. So I think that's where the SPR has edge over uh, conventional techniques like immunoprecipitation or yeast to hybrids yes. and some of the other large screening methods where there's a good chance of identifying the false positives. Sure. Sure. There's a lot of promiscuous binders in, in screening experiments, right. which will be avoided if you have the specificity that beer core gives you. Sure. So we start with each of these applications in detail. The first application which we will talk about is the specificity application. Now, some interesting questions that are asked when, you, when you're doing specificity applications. Is the drug binding to the receptor or not? Is the MAB identifying a strain or not? Or is there any non-specific binding in the interaction that I'm studying? And these questions are very easily answered by beer code. Shown here in my PPT is actually an example where we're looking for binding. And here, someone came to us with about 40 different compounds, and they want to see if any of these compounds binds to a receptor. And here we have 40 of these experiments done. Most of these are not binding or binding at a very base level. But if you look at this presentation, I have highlighted one spot here with one molecule that's shown circled in red. This particular molecule is actually binding to the receptor. So at the end of a very short experiment of looking at the receptor versus candidate binding, you are able to determine which of these candidates is actually binding to the given receptor. A very simple example of specificity. Going on to the next application. So, sorry, I'll interrupt you here. So basically, uh, they'll just demonstrate that even if we are very much uh, unaware about the components which could be interacting, this could be a good screening tool, right? Because Absolutely. Uh, if there's a real strong interaction uh, and a specific interaction, then probably we can see some outliers like this. Absolutely. If you want to do that first level screening, to just quickly find binders right. uh, in some kind of a screening experiment like you mentioned, then this would be a very good starting point for you to quickly find those uh, those binders so many, and take them to the next level. Right. Many times when we have a thrust of identifying some like large uh, drug library, right? Or yes. small compounds. And then at that time maybe to begin with, this Absolutely. could be a good screening tool. Yeah. I would also like to point out that this is a very small experiment. It barely takes about one minute to do this experiment. So basically per minute you can do one screen and that way you will have a lot of compounds screened uh, you know, in a very rapid manner. So that is the first step in the specificity experiments. Now let us assume that you found this candidate and you think that it is a specific binder and now you want to look at the kinetics of the interaction. And Everyone understands that kinetics is an extremely important part in drug discovery. In proteomics, when you look at interactions, one of the important things that right. you need to look at is what is the on rate and off rate of the interaction. Absolutely. And so in that sense, how fast does this interaction happen? And which candidate is kinetically preferred? Because if you have two candidates, both of them trying to be drugs, you should choose the candidate that is kinetically preferred. And in most cases, in recent cases actually, Kinetics is being used to show similarity of drugs. For example, there's a lot of biosimilars coming out of India right. and biosimilars, biosimilar manufacturers actually want to show that their molecule is similar or equal to the innovator's drug. Then one good way of showing that they're similar is by showing the similarity in kinetics. Right. So that is where again kinetics experiments will be helpful to you. 
uh, experimenters, scientists can actually calculate the K on, K off, or the K A, K D, and the K capital D, which is the affinity of the interaction. They can calculate this and in a very fast way actually understand the interaction a little better than they did before. Because in, in the first instance, they only knew whether the interaction was happening or not. Right. Whereas right now, they also know that the uh, what the kinetic parameters of this interaction are. And once they know the kinetics of the interaction, they come to affinity. So identifying the on rate, off rate, and dissociation constant, I think this provides a very strong tool and information by for characterization. For characterization, and that is, I think, the big thrust of all the pharmaceuticals. For Absolutely. Doing biosimilars. Absolutely. Anyone who is pursuing biopharmaceuticals or recombinant proteins, biosimilars. Uh, or even novel drug discovery people in the small molecule arena right. uh, want to actually characterize the interaction in terms of, in terms of the on rate, the off rate, and the affinity of the interaction. And that's something that is very well accomplished by the, um, by the SPR technology. So when it comes to affinity, as you can see here, how strong is the bond? Is the binding strong enough, enough to be physiologically important? And this is one very important thing because more and more drugs are coming out these days which are one dose a day drugs or which are you know fast acting drugs and these kind of discoveries depend a lot on kinetics and affinity of the interactions and that's where BACOR can actually come in in a very big way and help people you know genetically or protein engineer their drugs so that they actually perform better than existing drugs. For a good comparison with the existing... Absolutely. Drugs. To make drugs better right. or to discover novel drugs that actually act better, mm -hmm. both of the cases I think SPR technology can be, can be useful. So as we have learned today, the SPR biosensors are optical sensors which are used to probe interactions between an analyte in solution and a receptor that is attached to the sensor surface. The binding of molecules in solution to the surface immobilized receptor changes the refractive index of the medium near the surface and the change in refractive index of the medium can be monitored in real time to measure the affinity of the query molecule towards its receptors. And the association and dissociation kinetics of the reaction can be monitored. We will continue our discussion on SPR in next lecture with our guest Mr. Lalit Kishore. Thank you.